Uh, so thank you. Uh, what I'm going to talk to you about today is a um, project um, at AMT, and I think it quite nicely illustrates um, how the e-science infrastructure that is being developed by AMS and other organisations such as Nectar are having a real impact on making um, data intensive research easier for um, researchers. Um, I'm Jeff Christensen, as, as uh, was probably mentioned. Um, I'm a senior business analyst at AMS, and I have a background in biology, um, in data science and biology. Um, so what I'm actually going to start the talk with is not data, but science or biology. So this project is based around cancer and research on cancer. And cancer is, uh, is caused effectively by unregulated cell growth. It's where a cell um, has, um, loses inhibition and, and grows um, out of control effectively and, and will end up forming a tumour. Um, and what actually causes this unregulated cell growth is, is, is the buildup of many, many DNA mutations in the chromosomes of a single cell. So this shows here some DNA and, 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 and these, these little ACGT bases here, you know, some of them get mutated. Um, this DNA is packed into chromosomes and they're shown here on the left. Um, and that's really uh, structures that, that hold the DNA and pack it into the nucleus. Um, so, as I said, there, there could be many, many mutations across all of these chromosomes. We have, we have 23 pairs in, in humans. Um, what on the next slide shows that when um, whole genome DNA sequencing, um, well, it's basically become cost effective to be able to sequence the entire DNA um, um, content of a single cell or, or, a, or a group of cells such as in a, in a mutation, in a, in a cancer. And what this here is showing is it's a quite a nice um, visualization of, of effectively all the mutations in a, in a type of, of cancer here. It's actually data from a, a breast cancer cell line, so it's not actually from a tumor, it's from a cell line that behaves like a tumor. Um, and the, the plot here is called the Sircos plot, but what it shows here is here on the left, we, we have those chromosomes all laid out nicely, one, two, three, four, and so on. And here, they're, they're just represented going around the circle in clockwise fashion. So we have one, two, three, four, and so on around the circle. <clears throat> but what, what whole genome DNA sequencing has shown is that there's, there's effectively a lot of mutations in these tumors. There can be single base changes, as I described just before. That's where, a, let's say, an A is changed to a T or a G is changed to a C. But there's also um, variations in copy number of genes and also structural rearrangements. And some of these structural rearrangements can be quite extreme. And, and they're shown here by all of these red lines. And it's effectively where you know, this, this line here represents that half of this chromosome 1 has been attached onto chromosome 8 in this particular cell. So basically, you know, whole, whole genome DNA sequencing has shown, you know, I guess it's shown that you know these tumors are actually much more mutated than we thought they were at a DNA level. Um, so the project I'm going to talk about is part of an international cancer um, genome sequencing effort around the world. There's 47 projects currently on the go um, across 15 countries. A lot of them are in the the USA and um, uh, various European countries, but there's other other countries in there, such as uh, Mexico and um, Saudi Arabia, and so on and so forth. And in this um, effort, Australia is um, involved in two uh, sequencing two types of cancers, um, and that's ovarian cancer and pancreatic cancer. And I mean, this is a really very large effort. They're going to sequence 21,000 tumors across a whole range of, um, of organs or cancers from different organs. And you can see here a variety of those, liver, lung, bladder, blood, bone, so on and so forth. But effectively, a lot of types of, of cancers. And then they, what they also need to do is, is compare the um, mutated or the, or the tumorous tissue, the DNA sequence from the tumorous tissue to non-tumor tissue. So they also need to sequence DNA from match non-tumors. Um, and that's a lot of data, effectively. So, as I said, the, the aim 
is to sequence DNA across all those types of tumours. Um, and that what's shown here is another of, of these circos plots. And this is this is some data from a, a melanoma versus a lung cancer. And you can see just at this level that there's a lot of differences in in the mutations between this particular cancer here and this particular cancer here. There may also be some common ones. For instance, this, this line across here might be the same as that one. Um, so by looking broadly across a lot of different tumor types, um, the, the, the aim is to identify, well, what are, what are common mutations across all cancers? So are there mutations in there that will effectively make a, a cell, um, a can cancer cell? Um, but then because there's a lot of information about tissue specific, um, uh, there will be a lot of information about tissue specific cancers, maybe it's also possible to identify mutations that are specific to a particular type of tissue. And then ultimately what, what, what all of this information is being seeked, is generated for is to inform therapeutic treatment. So hopefully um, better and more directed cancer treatments will be able to be derived from this information. So back to the Australian component, um, there's there's two uh, groups that are that are um, responsible for uh, sourcing the particular tumours. Um, so the pancreatic cancers um, are coming from Sydney, from the Garvin Institute of Medical Research, and Professor Andrew Biankin is responsible for that. Um, he's very much a clinician who is also doing uh, you know biology research. The ovarian cancer tumours are coming from Melbourne, from the Peter Mac Cancer Centre, and Professor David Botel is responsible for that. Now, the other part of the Australian component, which is very important, is the, is actually doing the DNA sequencing and performing bioinformatics, so gleaning information from the DNA sequence. Um, and Professor Sean Grimmond at the Queensland Centre for Medical Genomics in um, at the University of Queensland in Brisbane is responsible for that. So in this Australian component, um, the derived data, so this is effectively the mutation information. It's not the raw DNA sequence, it's, it's derived information. And part of the um, international effort is, is a, there's a requirement that that information is released through a data portal that's internationally accessible. Um, and there's just a screenshot here showing uh, some of the data for the pancreatic cancer here, as you can see from our Centre for Medical Genomics here, um, there's some derived data here. So this is showing in a particular gene, it doesn't really matter what gene it is, but it's saying that um, four out of 67 tumours sequenced have a copy number alteration or variation in this particular gene. Um, so if one goes in here and, and sees this information and clicks on this, there's some further information here. Uh, it lists the ID of the donor and various um, information about the uh, mutation. So here we can see that in this particular donor, in this particular tumour, there's a, a copy number of two, for instance. Um, and once again, if you click on the donor, there is actually some information about the person that this came from. Um, and this is a 69-year-old male from New South Wales. Um, and there's a, there's a little bit of information there about the type of patient. But um, all of that derived data is, is released through the in international data portal, but the access to the raw data is controlled, and that's because of privacy issues. And apart from things like somebody's name, I mean, almost the ultimate in, in identifying a person is their entire DNA sequence. So that, that, that access to the raw data is controlled, and it's controlled um, or, or only bona fide researchers who are doing collaborative research with, with these, um, uh, these groups are permitted to have access to the raw data. Okay, so the, the, the sort of broad um, mutations that I showed a couple of slides back, um, these ones here, these, these are called by a, 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 an algorithm just runs through the sequence and predicts um, certain mutations of certain known types. But what really is, is, is of, of need for um, the scientists working on this is that they need to be able to actually analyze the raw data themselves to be able to identify maybe other mutations and, and um, 
various rearrangements and so on and so forth. And and really, it's the it's the scientists, the wet lab scientists or the clinicians who would like to be able to analyze that raw data. Um, traditionally, this would have definitely required a bioinformatician because a lot of the analysis of the raw DNA sequence needs to be analysed with scripts and various things like that. Um, but uh, not really, this is not really anymore going to be the case if, if um, a virtual laboratory is used. Um, so one of the other um, e-research um, infrastructure developers in Australia, which is Nectar, um, is developing a virtual genomics lab. And this AND project with the um, DNA sequence of the tumours is very closely aligned with the Nectar Virtual Genomics Laboratory project. So what is the Nectar Virtual Genomics Lab? Well, it's, it's basically a system that's going to allow DNA sequence analysis software to be stored on the research cloud in Australia and analysed on the research cloud here. So there's one aspect, and that's a data integration aspect. So the data is, is accessible for um, analysis. The data integration through the, through, the, through the virtual genomics lab, or VGL, is going to be the latest human genome reference sequence. There's a, um, a, another very large data set called the Thousand Genomes data set, and that's where the full genetic information from a thousand individuals has been sequenced. So part of that information is also going to be held in the VGL. And then Bioplatforms Australia, which is an NCRIS um, um, uh, capability, um, is, is um, generating data for various framework data sets of, of reference or, or of importance to Australia. And these are wine yeast, because wine is obviously a large export crop. Melanoma, which is a serious um, health problem in this country. Soil, because um, Australia's soil is not best for agriculture and forestry and things like that. So um, a better understanding um, what microorganisms live in the soil is, is very important um, to know. And um, the, other, the other data set that Bioplatforms Australia is generating is for wheat. And again, wheat, of course, is a is a, is a significant um, cash crop for Australia. And, and again, to grow in the poor soils of Australia, better understanding what types of wheats, um, the genetic makeup of them can, can help to increase yields. So that's the virtual genomics lab data integration side of things. Um, the other part is the analysis, visualization and analysis. So um, the software for visualization that's, that, that we'll be running in the VGL is something called the UCSC Genome Browser. So this is University of California, Santa Cruz Genome Browser. And it's very widely used across the biology um, arena for, for, for visualizing genetic information. And it may be slightly too small to see here, but this is, this is actually just showing one chromosome here. And this little red line here is, is, is blown up into this here. And, and effectively, what you can do is you can have many, many tracks associated with this. And, and, and these can be selected here and go up way down the page. But you can, you can literally have thousands of tracks aligned to the reference sequence. So whilst those circle spots I showed are very, very good for showing um, the difference or the differences and variation within one particular type of tumor, the the UCSC genome browser is great for showing variation in, in many, many, many um, particular or different samples or tumors. So uh, the UCSC genome browser will be running on the virtual lab. And the other, the other aspect that's, that's very important for the VGL is an, anal an, is an analysis package, and that's called Galaxy. And Galaxy is, has, um, it's widely used, again, in biology. Um, it generally would have a local instance of it, but what it allows one to do is, is it's effectively a, a, a workflow generator of web services. And all the web services do very small and specific, I guess, bioinformatic tasks. But what, what a user can do is, is make these incredibly complex workflows out of these by saying, do this process first and then do this process and so on and so forth. So these very complicated workflows can be generated um, 
to take input data, run it through many, many processes and generate output data. So that was, um, <clears throat> I guess, a, a, a brief introduction about the virtual genomics lab. Um, and at ANS, we're funding another project, um, which is it's called the Cancer Genome Linkage Project. And effectively, what it is going to do is to allow wet lab scientists and clinicians to allow complex cancer genomics data using the VGL. And so this is wet lab scientists like Andrew Bianca that we discussed before. Uh, so the software development for this particular ANS project will be done by uh, the Queensland Facility for Advanced Bioinformatics. They're based at the University of Queensland. Um, the development of, of this software will be closely aligned with that of the Nectar VGL. And that, that the Nectar VGL is being developed by um, Dr. Mike Fezzen at the University of Queensland as well. Um, the data integration aspect for this project is going to be to include the very large raw um, pancreatic data set into the Nectar VGL. And this is specifically so um, Andrew Biankin and, and groups like his at the Galvin can, can, can um, access the data. The project is also going to develop those workflows, Galaxy workflows that you saw. So these will be reusable by uh, the clinicians and what it will allow is for much easier mutation searching and analysis of the raw sequence by um, the wet lab and wet lab scientists and clinicians. Uh, what we'll also be doing is minting digital object identifiers for the Galaxy workflows. So because these are reusable, these are, and, and, and a lot of the Galaxy workflows are very, very complex. So it's a great idea to have those reusable and have, have them citable as well um, to be rerun on the Nectar virtual genomics lab. And, and, and what, it also, what it also does is I think allows the workflow to be um, properly identified and, and rerun in a, in a standardized way um, or, or to allow users to, in, to make sure that they're using exactly the same version of the workflow that was described according to the digital object identifier. Um, and then ultimately, the software that's developed through the pancreatic data set will be redeployable for other groups. Um, and obviously, the first one will be people of the groups studying ovarian cancer at the Big Mac um, in Melbourne. Um, so that's that's really, I guess, what I wanted to discuss today, and and I think it's a very nice example of a lot of the infrastructure that's been put in place, um, or the e-research infrastructure that's been put in place. It's coming to fruition, and there's there's a lot of, I guess, um, connections and and people and institutions that are involved in this project. Um, obviously, there's the funders, the Queensland government, the national government, and the NHMRC have all funded uh, generation of this data or generation of the infrastructure that is being developed. Uh, both Nectar and ANS have been uh, taking a role in ensuring that the VGL will be up and running. Um, there's a lot of institutions who are generating data. Um, so the Garvin Institute of Medical Research, which is affiliated with the University of New South Wales, we have the Peter Mac, which is affiliated with the University of Melbourne. Um, and then we have UQ, who is doing the bioinformatics um, uh, development, um, or the yeah, bioinformatics development, along with QFAB and QCIF as well. Um, so what, what all of this is ultimately allowing is for data to be generated. From that data, research is conducted on it, and from that, knowledge is, 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 is produced. Um, and of course, bioinformaticians and clinicians are involved in all of this, but ultimately, it's a very nice example of, of this infrastructure actually being used to help people, um, so patients, and to ultimately inform potential therapies. Um, so thank you.